Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own flower press for under $15. I've recruited my husband Aaron to show you how he builds it and later on I'm going to share some tips for how to pick your flowers and also how to press them. So to get started with the build, we have some untreated, unfinished poplar wood here and you can buy this by the foot at your hardware store. You don't have to use this exact wood that we're getting. This is a fairly soft wood because we want it to be pretty easy to cut and drill into. But if you want, you can also go for plywood, which might be cheaper, but you might also have to buy that in sheets. Or you could also go for a harder wood. We bought two feet here, but this also depends on how big you want your flower press to be. We're just going to cut our pieces into squares here. So our wood is about seven and a quarter inches wide. So that's how long we're gonna cut the pieces as well. This way we only have to cut two Two sides of the wood instead of all four sides to be a square. And in the end, the final pressing area is going to be a slightly smaller rectangle. We're using power tools here, but you can definitely use handheld tools as well for this. And if you don't have a handheld saw, you can also take advantage of the cutting services that will be at your Home Depot or hardware store. They even usually have a cutting station where you can go ahead and cut your wood right there with the saws that they provide. Once we have our pieces cut out, we're going to be drilling holes into the four corners. We're using a 5 16th of an inch drill bit here because that's how big our hardware is. If you're using a slightly different size, then just drill a hole that's whatever size hardware you're using. And Aaron's just clamping both pieces down with his hand so that he can drill through both pieces at once just to make sure that everything's all lined up. It's easier to do it this way than to try to make them line up later on. You can see here that Aaron actually drilled through to our little pathway here. So just make sure you have some protection behind your wood if you're concerned about your surfaces and make sure you don't do this indoors. Once all the pieces are cut and drilled, we're going to move on to sanding. Here we're using 120 grit sandpaper. This is a little bit of a rougher sandpaper. So this is gonna get out any of those splinters that are still hanging on the wood. Make sure you get on all the sides and corners so that there are no sharp edges and also to get around the holes as well. And later on you can also go in with a finer tooth sandpaper if you want, like a 220 grit or something like that. But we just went with this 120 and I think it turned out really well. To get inside the holes, which is not completely necessary but if you want it to look very polished, this is a good extra step to take. You can just wrap your sandpaper around something skinny, stick it in the hole and just twirl it around back and forth until it's nice and smooth in there. And here's what the two pieces look like before and after sanding. You can see that it's a pretty big difference. The one that has been sanded just looks a lot more polished and finished and you can just be sure that you're not going to get any splinters while using it later on. Here's a look at the hardware we're using. As I mentioned, all of our hardware is 5 16 of an inch wide. So we have carriage bolts here, washers, nuts, and wing nuts. You'll need four of everything except for the washers, which you'll need eight of. The wing nuts came in packs of three, which I think are a total scam because whoever needs three of something. So we just had to buy two packs of that. So you can just use those extras for the next flower press that you can make as a present for someone else. We're starting off by putting the carriage bolts in through the bottom plank of wood. And then on the other side of the wood, you're gonna put in a washer and then a nut. The nuts are in there to completely secure the carriage bolts into this bottom piece of wood so that when you're taking your flower press apart to take your flowers out that this doesn't fall out every time. And you're going to repeat this for all four of the corners and then tighten all of the nuts with a wrench. At this point we realized that we needed the holes to be a little bit bigger on the top piece of wood and this is just going to provide you a little bit of wiggle room when you're trying to put that wood on top so that it's just easier to get in and out every time. So Aaron's gonna go in and use a bigger bit. And while he does that, I'm gonna show you what goes inside the flower press. So here I have some sheets of very thin cardboard. These are just like backs of packaging that I've saved up from products that I've bought. If possible, I would recommend that you stay away from corrugated cardboard. Just the texture of the lines really comes through on the delicate flower petals afterwards. Next, I have a bunch of sheets of lined loose leaf paper. You can also use printer paper. You basically just want a lot of very thin, cheap paper. And before we get started layering, let me just give you some tips for when you're going out and trying to gather your flowers, what you should look for. So here is this beautiful layered petunia that I have. 
even though it's so pretty, this is an example of a flower that would not be great to press because it's very thick, it has a lot of layers, it just has too much moisture and volume and I just don't think it's going to come out very well so I would avoid this type of flower. This viola on the other hand is one of the best flowers for pressing in my opinion. I like that they're very flat, they don't have any rounded area behind the petals so it's really easy to lay down on your paper and they also have such beautiful colors and patterns which I think show up really well once you press them. And if you're going around and and you see flowers that have big clusters of smaller flowers. These might not be great to press whole, but if you want to take the individual petals or flowers out, those could be a great option. Here's another example of a flower that is really just a cluster of smaller flowers, so I'll be taking these apart to press the individual ones as well. Gathering these flowers is so much fun because once you get down and look at everything closely, you start to notice all of the different intricate shapes and colors and patterns that are on different flowers, like these catnip flowers that I have here, and the foliage is also really cool too so I'm gonna make sure I pick a bunch of these stems of leaves because just like a bouquet you need foliage to balance out your flowers it's also great just to look at things that would kind of be considered weeds like I have this big field of buttercups in my yard here and even though these are considered weeds when you get up close they're actually really pretty delicate flowers these are another perfect flower for pressing because they are such a flat shape and I also picked a bunch on the stem as well and I'm gonna press these kind of sideways because I like having the stem and foliage along with the flower. You can even look at grass flowers in your yard, though you would never think of them. When you go up close, you realize how pretty all of those little fern-like leaves are. You can also look around at trees and maybe you'll find some cool looking leaves. Maple leaves are really beautiful. They have an interesting shape and also a really cool color. So after going around and picking a bunch of different flowers, this is what I end up with. It is such a beautiful, colorful spread. When I did this about a month or two ago, it was just spring flowers that were in bloom, so it was very like pale pinks and a lot of green foliage. So this is a completely different look. And that's the fun thing about flower pressing. You can just do this in every season and you're gonna come up with something different. So now I'm gonna start layering some of these flowers in the actual press. I'm starting off with a piece of cardboard. Then I'm gonna lay in two sheets of my loose leaf paper and then I'm gonna start putting my flowers on top of that. I have some of those buttercups that I'm laying sideways, but for some of them, I'm going to tear off as much of the stem as possible and lay them face down on my paper. It's easier to do them face down instead of face up because you can really make sure that they stay more flat when you add the other layers on top of that. After you've finished with your layer of flowers, you're gonna add two more sheets of loose leaf paper, another piece of cardboard, and then two more sheets of paper again. And you're just gonna keep repeating this process. Here you can see I have that little stem of catnip flowers. And even though it's a little bit bulky, the flowers are also so small that I don't wanna deal with picking them also. I'm just gonna press this entire stem and kind of see how it turns out. Even though ideally you should have flatter flowers, I think it's also really fun to experiment. And if it doesn't come out okay, that's totally fine too. You're not losing much because the flowers are gonna grow again, so you might as well just try them while they're in bloom. And with that in mind, you definitely want to press more flowers than you think you're going to use in your final project because some of them might not turn out as nice as you hope or they might not dry properly, the color might fade, or because they're so delicate once they're pressed you might rip them trying to remove them from the paper. I'm not trying to discourage you by saying that a lot of them will fail but I just want to encourage you to press as many as you can and just enjoy discovering what happens. Here's that big flower that I showed you earlier that is really just a cluster of flowers so I'm just taking those out and pressing the individual petals. I tried putting them face down like I mentioned earlier, but because of the shape of these flowers, it was a little difficult and also the wind was blowing them everywhere. So I kind of just laid them however they went and stuck the paper and cardboard on top and we'll just see how it goes. I also found a couple of flowers that really had such beautiful intricate details in them and they were really pretty. Again, they were just flowers that I had overlooked before so it was really cool just to take a closer look at them and hopefully that pattern will translate well once they're pressed. So you just wanna continue layering here, put down your cardboard, your paper, your flowers, paper, and cardboard, and just keep repeating that until you fill this up. You also wanna make sure to leave just a little bit of space in between your flowers. If you put them too close together, then when you flatten them, they might spread a little bit and touch each other, and it doesn't really turn out well if they're overlapping. It's kind of like having a baking sheet of cookie dough, so you just wanna always give them a little bit of breathing room. But I'm finished with all my layers here and I think it's a pretty good amount so I'm going to end it with my top piece of wood. Then I'm going to put in the washers on the four corners and then the wing nuts over that. 
So just go around all four corners to tighten them up one by one until it's as tight as you can go. And depending on how many layers you have and how thick the flowers are that you're pressing, you might have to go in after an hour or after a day and just tighten up those wing nuts again because as they flatten and the papers absorb their moisture, there's going to be a little bit of extra space and you'll find that you'll be able to tighten them up a little bit more. For now I'm leaving the top of the press blank, but this is a great area for you to decorate. I think stencils or stamps would look really nice on this and you can really make it as pretty as you want. Next you're probably wondering how long you have to press your flowers until they're ready. And this is kind of hard to answer because it really depends on the flowers that you picked, how big they are, how wet they were when you first started. But just as an example, here are my flowers after less than a day. It's been maybe like 16 hours at this point. And you can see here that my first layer of flowers looks pretty great already. And you can see how it's very flat, it's almost see-through, and very very delicate. So I think that's pretty much ready. It could probably go for another day or so, but I think this would also be good to use as it is. As I go down deeper into my layers, I'm finding some more flowers that are kind of sticking to the paper, and that's how you can tell that they still have moisture in them. They're not completely dry and could definitely go for a little longer. You might be able to see that your paper has gotten a little wrinkly from absorbing any of the moisture from your flowers, and if it's really wet and wrinkly, you might want to replace that after a day. And I feel like it's starting to become a trend in my videos where my cats just end up completely photobombing the video. So here's my other cat. She loves to eat plants and flowers. So here she is just checking out what I have. Most of the flowers that I've pressed before, if I'm not doing anything crazy thick like a rose or something like that, they're usually done in a week. So that's it for today's video. I'm going to end up with a bunch of beautiful pressed flowers, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you want to check out how I put them to use. And please leave some kind comments for my husband down below as well, just to thank him for being on this video with us and showing us how he made this. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye!